Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, so we're back here on Blizzard, Blizzon, one of those two prime, and we're gonna warp to the mining hub from the landing pad, and you should probably be around the landing pad once you finish the area like we did in the previous video. And then we're going to head on over to the side quest. Uh, if you're going that way, could you look around for Chef Tulio? She, uh, she was supposed to be back with ingredients an hour ago. Don't know if she's hurt. Sure, I can keep an eye out. So we need to help this cook out with her cookery, and she's having some creativity problems. With the fuzz in the ears, how would you like to help create our galaxy's next food dish of the century? Don't answer, it's rhetorical. Just make your way up to Crystal Ridge, and we shall be starving. Chef Julio, I presume? And as I'm sure she's explained at some point, or she will eventually, she works best under pressure. And there's also a rift here that we can do, and remember these rifts always have some armor at the end of them. So that makes them very, very useful for the long run, especially on the hardest difficulty. So these, none of these rifts are really very hard at all. My goodness, excuse me. <clears throat> and they're all way too short. I thought they really had an opportunity to add some really difficult platforming in some of these areas, but they really went super conservative and made sure all of them were pretty dang easy. So the trick with this one is that all the platforms are invisible, and you just have to pay attention to where the boxes or enemies are, and that's it. You know, two short little platforming sections later and you get the Galactic Ranger chest. So once we get two of those, I think we're at like 10% damage reduction for some kind of enemy, I think the robots. And if we get all three, we're at like a 20% damage reduction, and that's a huge damage reduction from any of these guys, because it kind of, it can go from like them doing 10 damage to you to like, you know, six or seven instead, and that does add up when they're trying to hit you four or five times. <laughs> okay, so this side quest is somewhat reminiscent of the earlier Ratchet and Clank games, where you'd have the main map, and then you would have kind of a side thing that you could do and you'd have to do a little bit of platforming and enemy battling before you get over there. So again, they are really just trying to make sure that this is in fact a Ratchet & Clank game, and we can make it over to this side just by using our hover boots and then double jumping, and you still get to do a double jump and a dash, so you can actually make some really crazy distances in this game, and you can skip massive parts of a lot of the levels just by using the hover boots. So I'm kind of excited to see what speedrunners are gonna do to this game because I think they're gonna be able to skip huge chunks of it, no problem. And it should be kind of fun to watch. Um, there probably is already people doing that. This game's been out, I forget, this game has been out for a pretty long time now, but it's just because it's taken me so dang long to get a hold of a PlayStation 5 that it feels like it's somewhat new. And I think, I, I only know like two other people who have a PlayStation 5, so it's still just, it's, they're still really hard to find. I mean, you want to spend a thousand bucks to get one on eBay, or you gotta like refresh the pages of a bunch of different stores near you and hope that one shows up and hope that when you actually add it in the cart and then click buy that it actually goes through. Because I don't know how many times I bought a PS5 and then it said, sorry, it's out of stock after I hit buy, you know. So that's just how it's going to go. And I think, I think it's going to get worse with electronics. Um, I really, I don't think these things are going to get any easier to get a hold of. And maybe once the semiconductor shortage is over, it'll be a little bit easier. I mean, we're, America's pouring tons and tons and tons of money into making new fabrication plants. Uh, but I still just kind of feel like that the only thing that a lot of these companies are going to be doing soon is raising the prices. I mean, obviously, if the PlayStation 5 was $1,000 at announcement, I think a lot of people would have been unhappy with that, but I don't think it would have mattered. Um, as we're seeing, with the scalp prices, people are willing to pay $1,000 for it, and there probably wouldn't be as big of a demand issue if it was twice as much money, you know? <laughs> so I just feel like that's going to be in our future. We're probably going to be spending one to two thousand dollars on a console later, and uh, games already are going up to seventy bucks each on consoles. I mean, I'm going to go out of my way to make sure I never pay seventy bucks for a game, but hey, other people will, no problem. And in many ways, we've already been doing that. If you think about it, um, how many games have a hundred and twenty dollar ultimate editions? Lots and lots of games already have that, and people buy them even though they don't really give you anything other than a couple of new skins and if you're lucky, uh, access to all of the 
future DLC. But other than that, you know, people have already been happily paying way more than 60 bucks for games. And then you have microtransactions inside the game. So why wouldn't they raise the price to 70, right? <laughs> We're going to pay it anyway. Uh, but that being said, especially with physical copies, if you go onto eBay, you can usually find a lot of the even newly released PlayStation games for less than 70 bucks. So uh, be sure to go physical until they remove physical items entirely, which they will one day. And until then, we're going to finally make it to the cook. I am Chef Tulio, and like all great artists, I can only create beauty when I'm suffering. Okay. To make my greatest dish yet, I must harvest the Serranium honey below us with this vacuum suck. But doing so requires my full attention, so I'll need someone to defend me from those allergic to brilliance. If you wish to be a part of culinary history, start the extraction sequence with that hammer crank. Alright, so as she explained, we're gonna have to defend the giant thing in the middle that I'll learn the name of once it pops up on the screen when I jump down there, and there's gonna be waves of enemies coming in from the left and the right side. And uh, there's also an elevator that will take us back, I think, there, so we'll use that later. Anyway, we're going to open it up here. And once that's done, the pump health. Okay, we got to protect the pump. And there's going to be some dimension crystals or dimension things um, eventually. That will open up on the left and right side of this arena. And if we warp on over, as she's also explaining, but I'll just talk over her. If we warp on over to the buttons, then a bunch of fire will show up and kill a lot of the enemies. But as you can expect, the buttons are not going to be showing up. Uh, very frequently, so you do want to try to use these kind of as a last resort, but don't be afraid to use them. They come back pretty quick, just not instantly, so you don't really want to use them on one enemy. You want to try to use them on a whole group. And of course, just try to pay attention to the health bar. If you notice it's taking damage, head on over there right away. And I'm going to really be trying just to use Mr. Fun Guy. He's a pretty good sort of sentry type of thing, and I really like... Um, he, he seems really good at holding off some of these choke points and at the very least, distracting them. Man, I forgot how much the NPCs talk in this game. <laughs> Here they come. Um, defend me while I dig deep for my inspiration. Okay, maybe we get some silence. Uh, Mr. Fun Guy is also a great place. This is a great place to level him up if you need to. And don't forget to uh, take a boost round trip every now and then to pick up all the bolts that are on the other side of the arena because with all these enemies dying usually far away from you they drop a ton of bolts and all you have to do is make one little circle and you'll get a whole bunch of extra bolts for you and those are of course useful for buying new weapons and right now that's about it in fact i think that's the only real use they have in this game is to buy new weapons Drink do we pair it with? I need more. More inspiration. More honey! You know, it is kind of funny. If you ever go back and play an older game, one that hasn't been released in the last 10 years, there's so much less dialogue from the NPCs unless it's in a cutscene compared to modern games. Like, in modern games you have the cutscenes, but then the NPCs talk to you the whole game, and it's always through some kind of radio or they're talking in your head. And it's just kind of funny to me because it does make the older games feel way more quieter, but in a weird way they almost feel a little bit more immersive because you're forced to like sit and exist in the world, you know? Uh, in these other ones there's always just someone talking to you at all times. And uh, like right here, Chef Tulio is letting me know that the pump's taking damage, I'm pretty sure, even though I am well aware of that because I'm getting a pop-up and the health bar on the pump is going down. So this is on the hardest difficulty, of course. The pump's going to take damage pretty much no matter what you do. Uh, maybe if you came back here way later and had way more weapons, this part, this uh, quest would be a walk in the park. But I'm still probably at the level that they wanted you to be at when uh, they had this sort of completion rate in mind, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, so we're just going to go through it anyway. 
We have to survive a couple of waves and the pump, as far as I know, is only on one health bar and there's no checkpoints. So you do have to do all this in one attempt. I don't know if that's true for other difficulties, but I really don't think this game has much um, in the way of inconsistencies between the difficulties. And it's kind of weird because as easy as this game is compared to some of the other Ratchet and Clank's, the checkpoints from time to time feel a little bit more brutal because some of the boss fights in this game are super long. And if you die in them, they make you restart the whole boss fight most of the time. So it does, in that way, it does feel a little bit brutal. So I guess that's good. There is still some difficulty, but I, I never once really struggled in this game. And I was kind of hoping there'd be one spot that I just had a really hard time on. And it was going to take me like a couple of attempts, or at least like 10 attempts, we'll say, to beat. And not even the arena, not even that was a problem, so... One day I can hope for a difficult semi-casual platformer. We did get that sort of with um, Crash Bandicoot, but that game's horrible on the PlayStation 4, man. It's so laggy and it's just, it's bad. <laughs> it's really bad. I could get it on PC, but then they have DRM, like I, it's this offline single player game. Uh, whatever. Activision will be Activision. Okay, so uh, that's going to be one of the last waves, I think, with all those flying goon guys. And once that's over with, uh, we'll be done with the side quest, and then we'll head off the planet. Eureka! The dessert shall be an upside-down snagglebeast honeymoon spa! Oh, yes! So much suffering. But now my imagination has woken from its slumber! <laughs> This honey smorgasbord will be beautiful. What suffering? You didn't do anything. Thank you for your assistance. Perhaps this will inspire you to make your own art one day. I'm just happy those miners are finally going to get some grub. Now, how do I get back to them? Oh, that security taxi should do the trick. All this food talk makes me wonder, Bolts. Who's the better cook? You or Ratchet? Oh, it is never a competition. Ah, uh, it's you, isn't it? I knew it. Stop at nothing to catch us. We'd better keep moving. 